State Public Re Regulation Commissioners have struck down the potential merger between PNM and East Coast utility provider Avon Grid. Those commissioners were expected to vote on whether or not to hear oral arguments in the merger case, but they went a step further. We'll get to all the reasons why, but broadly, PRC Chairman Steve, Stephen Fishman said two companies have, quote, a demonstrated record of bad behavior, end quote. That includes billing errors in the Northeast years ago. And Senator Griego, was this doomed from the start, given that history? I mean, these quotes from these PRC folks are really, really hard. I don't think it was doomed from the start because I actually thought they had a ton of momentum. They, mm -hmm. uh, it became unfortunately very transactional. I mean, I think the, both uh, Avangrid and Iberdola were sort of just trying to heap a round after round of additional concessions to the 23, 24 groups involved. Mm -hmm. And they got 23 of the 24 to stand down or at least support it. But the one group that stayed in there, uh, New Energy Economy, basically uh, the most knowledgeable, but also relentless in in just making sure that we uh, made uh, the right choice. And I think that I think that the more information that came out about both companies, mm -hmm. the more um, questionable it became. I was frankly shocked it was a five unanimous vote to, to reject the merger. That's I thought point. it was going to be a two or a four one because that's the way right. it was coming down. So I actually think as time went on, Gene, it got worse for the companies. And I don't think it was just around service or some of the press around the, the, the controversies with the Iberdola in Spain. Mm -hmm. It was also this idea of um, who's really going to benefit, right? And I right. think if you're a PM, anybody on the call or listening, if you're a PM shareholder, it was great for you because they got a premium for the shareholders. If you happen to be related to anybody or part of the PM management, it was also a boon for them. Mm -hmm. But for ratepayers and for people who really want to develop a really community based or whether it's community solar or, or municipalities being able to have more control over their, their energy uh, use and consumption and um, it was not great for them because this was really essentially consolidated uh, mm -hmm. on steroids, a big, not just national, but multinational company using this particular deal to, to broaden the model of a, of a really powerful private, privately owned, share, not shareholder owned necessarily That's right. company. Yep. Um, so anyway, so I think personally, I think it's an opportunity for us to take a different look at what we want to do. If we want a renewable economy, is there another way to get there? And with all the money we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. on this show and in the future, could we invest some of that in building our own local community-based capacity to really transition to this sustainable, uh, you know, post post fossil fuel economy? And I think it's possible because ten percent of the energy in this country is community-based power companies. It's not investor-owned, and it's not it's not it's not the current model that that we're so used to at PNM. You make a great point. Senator, a very great point. We're almost arguing in a, in a 1990s or 2000 kind of way and energy is going in a whole other direction here. Tom, other concerns about Avon Grid uh, expressed by the PRC examiner include a poor customer service, Eric mentioned, increased rates, uh, $60 million in fines issued by state regulators in New England, particularly Maine. Pretty serious concerns. And, and Cynthia Hall, one of the regulators, she had a quote, there are a lot of risks that are hard to fully quantify, but there are strong red flags flying in our face, end quote. That's tough stuff. Yeah, yeah it is. You know, I, uh, I think Senator Griego brought up, uh, raised a number of uh, solid points as far as, you know, if Avangrid and PNM decide to take another bite of the apple, so to speak, mm -hmm. things that they should consider. I think that that's going to be pretty difficult seeing that it was, you know, a unanimous no. I mean, that was really surprising to me. Mm -hmm. I think one of the areas where, we, you know, where I think there was uh, a misstep was in the messaging. Uh, because, you know, there was a lot of talk about, you know, 65 million uh, in rate credits, 15 million to low income, uh, you know, for low income energy, 2 million to help improve access to electricity. Well, those are all big numbers. And when you consider that half of the state of New Mexico, that half of the residents or on some, some type receive some kind of federal aid, mm -hmm. you know, that messaging, you know, that you just can't comprehend all that money and what that benefit's going to be. So I think that there was a misstep in messaging of really making that connection with New Mexico consumers, uh, although their target audience was clearly based on all of the full page ads, all the letters right. to the editor. Yep. Uh, it was to rally business to help in influence and uh, get the, uh, 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 the PRC to come alongside and say, yes, this is a good deal. 
And so I, I think that that was a strategic misstep was really kind of creating that messaging that brought in all New Mexico residents. Instead, you just had dollar signs that a lot of people in the state just, you know, like going, yeah, that's that's a lot of money. I'm never going to see any of it or really understand how it would be applied. That's a fair point. I have to say good, good stuff there, Tom. Senator um, Snyder, Attorney General Hector Baldaris had been a vocal figure supporting the merits of this merger, as you know, that's despite him facing ethical questions about his involvement with certain players in the deal. And as you know, he was clear to those ethics complaints. But how does it sit to, for you, uh, for him to be so out front and center on this issue? In, in many ways, I think he's doing his job. Mm -hmm. Had there not been the consideration, prior consideration about his friend being their attorney, mm -hmm. is that is what the attorney general is supposed to be doing in some areas of his responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is true. Um, I can't imagine um, A.G. Balderas being hiding behind his light behind a bush. I think he's smart, he's talented, and felt compelled to make his statement about right. what he thought was best for the citizens of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, you know, to me it was just him doing his job and his pers maybe his personal feeling got in a little bit. But the thing I find most interesting is how, and I don't think it was just the dollars or the increased benefit package or concessions, is all the groups except uh, New Energy Economy who had been opposing this mm -hmm. merger suddenly were supporting it. What happened? What do they know that was not presented? I didn't see any articles about that, really. I just don't know why, but it says to me, there was something besides the money mm -hmm. that that was part of their consideration. Um, I do think, I agree with Tom, everything was geared, unfortunately, in the advertising and information toward the business community. Mm. Well, that rubbed some people, citizens in our state, the wrong way. That's right. I, I didn't feel like they, p and and Alvin Guard really spoke to the people. They just, you know, if you're telling me that the Chamber of Commerce and so-and-so CEO and da-da-da-da-da-da, well, I know all those people, and yeah, they're wonderful. They're going to look for the business deal. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel like the message was good and out to the people. The, the other thing I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to agree with you, Senator, that you know, you think about the TV campaign with the people holding up the signs, it was pretty weak yeah. tea when it really comes to <laughs> trying to move hearts and minds. Let me go, go I, let me go to Senator Grego here real quick, if I could. Uh, we made I'll come back to you, Senator Snyder. We made changes to the PRC several years ago to try and up the professional expertise of commissioners. As you know, you were part of those discussions right here at this table years ago. Uh, tough question. Did those changes pay off in this situation given the outcome? Um, I, th I always thought it was a red herring. Look, the, the folks, Steve, I, we, I served with Steve Fishman. He was a former CEO. You know, he's a, he's a guy who ran a, who was a CEO of a, a pretty good sized corporation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Joe Maestas, uh, Commissioner Maestas is a, you know, one of the smartest people in public. You know, he's an engineer, uh, compared a lot to Martin Heinrich, who has a solid sort of technical credentials. So I think they're, pretty knowledgeable. Not all of them are, you know, experts in, in energy policy, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more concerned, Gene, with looking forward, this I, this, this decision mm -hmm. to really that the industry, including PM, to sort of make the, the PRC non-elected. We talked about that on a, on a previous show. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it may play out. One scenario is if if the Supreme Court doesn't approve this, that they may actually wait and they, the amount of time it may take to get through the courts. Mm -hmm. That this new commission, which will be appointed by whoever the governor, either Governor Lehan Grisham or if there's a new governor, um, will get to appoint these folks. And I, regardless of who wins, I think they're likely to be much more pro-merger. I think that's one of the things that Avangrid and uh, Iberdo and them are sort of betting on. And that's mm -hmm. one scenario that could, pl could, could play out. I think having commissioners who are elected by the citizens who are sh absolutely should have some minimal qualifications, but I don't think any whether Democrat or Republican should be appointing um, folks who then will make this is going to be the first huge decision that this non-elected PRC could make. Mm. And it could be very much go against, I think, public opinion on it. I haven't seen a lot of polling, but my understanding is most folks to the earlier point is like, A, they don't understand it, but to the extent that 
that, you know, that this is a big kind of multilateral or multinational That's right. deal. That's right. You know, and PNM's not incredibly popular with the with the general public. That's right. Uh, and when you when you think about it, guys, a four point three billion all cash deal does not come along that often in this world. Thank you for your thoughts on this topic. We're out of time. We've been following uh, this for months now. We're going to continue to do so. We're back in a few minutes to talk about the governor's plan to attract and retain our teachers.